Hello everyone, and welcome to the first video in our series of tutorials on Symantec Backup Exec Server 2010. Backup Exec is a complete backup and recovery solution for businesses of all sizes. This tutorial will cover the preliminary planning and design steps that need to be taken before implementing a solution like Backup Exec. The design phase is arguably the most important stage in implementing any backup solution because in the event of a disaster, nothing can be left to chance. Our discussion on backup scheme planning and development will be with respect to Semantic Backup Exec, but the concepts are applicable to all backup solutions. First, we will discuss the evaluation of the critical data in the infrastructure and how to incorporate all the systems into the backup scheme. Next, we will discuss the evaluation of the hardware element and what factors to consider when selecting a hardware backend for your system. Then, we will address data retention policy and how designating media sets in Backup Exec allows you to ensure that the data is being retained for the appropriate period of time. Next, we will cover device configuration within Backup Exec and how to handle tape devices, local and network volumes, and device pools. Then, we will discuss what considerations need to be taken when scheduling backup jobs and what the benefits and drawbacks are of the different types of jobs. Lastly, we will take a look at some of the other factors involved in creating a comprehensive backup system. Let's begin our discussion on how to design a backup scheme. The first step many individuals take when designing a backup system is to enumerate all the data. They tend to pose the question, what data is critical for the business? This is a valid question, but a better one is what data is not critical for the business? There are basically two approaches you can take when selecting data for backup, an inclusive or an exclusive approach. An inclusive approach would involve explicitly selecting all the critical data to include in the backup scheme. An exclusive approach would involve including all the data and then excluding data only after inspection and determining that the data is not critical. The safest approach is to be exclusive and treat all data as critical. This is because if something is overlooked in an inclusive approach, it can mean disaster. However, if something is overlooked in an exclusive approach, the data will still be accounted for. In an exclusive scheme, there will typically be items that have valid reasons for being excluded. An example would be excluding the backup volume and temporary locations used by backup exec so that they do not disrupt the backup process. Once you understand how to approach all the data in the infrastructure, you need to evaluate what types of systems the data resides in. This includes the types of operating systems, file systems, databases, and third-party software that are housing the data. Depending upon where the data resides, measures may need to be taken to ensure that the data can be properly incorporated into the backup scheme. Symantec Backup Exec provides agents for backing up many industry standard systems such as Windows and Linux servers, Microsoft SQL and Oracle databases, Microsoft Exchange, and VMware Virtual Infrastructure Systems. If there are agents available for your systems, they are definitely the best choice since they integrate directly and allow for the backup procedure to be much easier to implement and manage. If there are third-party systems in place that do not have agents available, steps need to be taken so that the data can be incorporated into the backup scheme. For example, Subversion is a revision control system that does not have an agent available. To incorporate such a system, you could schedule to dump the data to a file to allow it to be incorporated into Backup Exec as a file level backup. By using Backup Exec agents along with native backup jobs to fill in the gaps, you can consolidate all your data into a single backup set. Once the critical data and associated systems have been identified, the next step is to decide what type of solution will be used to house the backup data. On the surface, it may seem like just a matter of having adequate storage space. However, there are other factors to consider. The first item is, what is the cost and probability of system downtime? Once those values are determined, 
Then you can assess the hardware solutions that meet your storage needs and ask, how quickly do these solutions enable me to recover from a disaster? Now that you've compared backup hardware on both capacity and disaster recovery limitations, you can analyze the real cost of implementing a given solution. Some inexpensive solutions may cost less to implement, but cost a great deal more in management and recovery costs. Another item to keep in mind is that your backup system should scale up to accommodate your future needs, typically for the next five years. Choose wisely when it comes to backup hardware because it will act as a safety net for the systems within your infrastructure. Now we have identified the critical data, how we are going to retrieve it, and where we are going to store it. The next steps are to determine how frequently backups will be created, how to organize backups, and how long they are to be retained. The first things to consider are how frequently the data is changing and what the appropriate interval is for creating backups. Depending upon the nature of the data and the operating schedule of the organization, backups may need to occur daily, multiple times a day, hourly, or even more frequently. This is important because the time or interval between backups will reflect how much data could be lost in the event of a disaster. After evaluating backup intervals, we then must determine how long the backups will be retained. For some organizations, there may be specific regulatory requirements that must be followed. In any case, you must consider how long until historical data becomes unhelpful in the event of a disaster. For instance, partial backups become less relevant once a more recent full backup has taken place. Likewise, a full backup also becomes less relevant once a more recent full backup occurs. However, please remember that backups should always be retained for a period of time in the event that a backup job fails, becomes corrupt, or if we need to retrieve historical data such as an employee's email. In addition to retaining backups, you will also need to organize your backup media in order to track them effectively. To ensure backups are organized and retained, Backup Exec requires all data to be incorporated into media sets. With media sets, you can organize all the backup media into logical groups so that they can be handled accordingly. They allow you to designate an append period, which controls when a given media can be appended to by another job. Media sets also allow you to designate an overwrite protection period, which prevents media from being overwritten before a set interval has passed. Media sets are an integral part of any backup scheme because they allow for the backup media to be arranged and the data retention policies to be enforced. Please join us for part two of this video series.